All right, so everybody knows what time of year this is. Wait, what? What, what, what is? N no, that's not what I meant. I mean, yes, it is that time of year and, you know, time for jingle bells and sleigh rides and all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, this wouldn't be called Vlogmas, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm specifically talking about year-end planning. And there are three things that I think every MSP needs to take a look at that they don't maybe normally take a look at. And uh, I think these are relevant. Uh, two of them every year, obviously. But one of them, specifically, I think really applies for this year and represents an opportunity for MSPs. So let's get into it. Alright, so number one. Number one is price increases. Your prices are going to increase this year on the stuff that you buy. So why wouldn't you increase your prices to your clients? It's natural, everybody kind of expects it even, and it's something you need to do to truly operate your business well. You're going to be paying employees more. Your employees are going to need more money, especially this year in light of the inflation problems that we're having, right? So you need more money to operate your business. That needs to come from your clients. You can't cut costs in order to find this money. You need to charge your clients more. So a couple of tips here. First of all, don't do any price increases with at least, or, or without at least a 90 day uh, notification because you just don't want to surprise your customers. You want to set that expectation early because let's face it, nobody, even if they're expecting it, nobody likes a price increase, right? So make sure you set it up way in advance so that they can plan for it because the farther you put it off, but notify them in advance, the less of a big deal it's going to be because they're just going to kick it down the road. And then when it shows up on their bill, they're not going to be surprised. Next, go ahead and tell them why. It doesn't need to be extremely detailed, but give them the broad strokes of why you're increasing prices and what the benefit is to them. Um, people like to have things explained to them, and if you set it out in clear, concise language, something that they're going to understand, something that they're going to feel like, hey, I need to pay my employees more so that they do a better job for you. That's logical. Now, another tip that you can use, and I know a lot of people are probably already doing this, is in exchange for the price not increasing, offer a term contract. Now, this doesn't necessarily solve the cash flow problem. All right, Editor Eric here, and I just wanted to interject with something very quickly. When you sign a client to a term contract, it means that now that you have clients who are really stuck with you, almost, okay, for good, not for bad, you can turn your attention to attracting and signing new clients, and that's how you add revenue. But it does make sure that, that customer stays a little bit stickier. Now, I know a lot of people are against term contracts, but they are successful for a lot of people. Now, did I hear somebody say set expectations? Yes, you guys know I'm extremely bullish on setting expectations, and in this case, it's no exception, right? So make sure that you have set the expectations in your managed service agreements that you will be increasing prices on an annual basis. It's a fact of life. They're used to it in their other contracts. Don't be afraid to put it in there. And last but not least, one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got in running my managed services business was to put in a five to 10% buffer over and above my target profit margin. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to adopt new tools, react to certain things that happen in the market without having to increase their prices during the year, okay? It allows you to upgrade their EDR, right? It allows you to upgrade uh, to something else that helps them, maybe a better RMM tool. I don't know what it is, but that five to 10% gives you enough buffer to accommodate for those things during the year and wait for that price increase at the beginning of the next year. Okay, so number two on my list. Number two on my list is risk opportunities. What do I mean by that? 
What I mean is there's a lot of risk, compliance, governance, those types of legislation and requirements from other sources that are coming in that are affecting your customers. An example of this that is especially relevant to 2023 is, of course, CMMC. If you have any clients that work with the DOD or work with contractors who work with the DOD, they probably need to have some type of CMMC compliance. So that's something you want to look into. Another thing, and I think this is extremely important, is insurance company cybersecurity policy requirements. Okay, Those are those checklists that a client usually presents you and say, hey, my cybersecurity insurance is renewing this year. Can you make sure that we're complying with all of these different things so that I can get my insurance? Or sometimes they'll just say, can you check all of these off so that I can go ahead and get my insurance? Well, if you check those off without actually making sure they're done, guess who's responsible when the cybersecurity policy doesn't pay out? Yeah, it's you. So one of the things that I want you to know, and because I looked this up, I actually have a statistic on this, is that 25% of cybersecurity insurance claims were not paid last year because the requirements list was not met. Or even if it was met, it wasn't adhered to over the term of the policy. So maybe you could check that off the box, you know, at the beginning of the year when they signed their cybersecurity policy or they renewed it, but something happened six months later and that stopped being monitored, that stopped being used, whatever it was, and now they're not compliant. And so the cybersecurity policy doesn't pay out when they have an incident. This is a problem. Okay, it's a problem that you can fix and you can charge for. Okay, this is a change that's coming from the insurance company. So why wouldn't you offer a supplemental security package that allows them to actually cover and make sure that they are covered not one time, but continuously throughout the year for all of the things on that list of requirements from the insurance company? So the bottom line there is make sure that you create a package that aligns with their cybersecurity policy requirements so that you're monitoring and you're auditing for all of those things. And of course, make sure that you include the cost for those tools that you're gonna to use to do that. But that gives you an extra package to sell to your existing clients that fills a need to make sure that if they do have an incident, they can recover using the money from their cybersecurity policy. All right, and last but not least, number three. Number three is employee reviews. And I know some of you are going, Eric, we've already done employee reviews this year. Well, I'm not talking about this year's employee reviews, am I? No, I'm talking about setting goals and setting expectations for next year. Because annual reviews are not something that you do at the end of every year. It's something that you start every year with. And I don't mean the review because the review is actually the end of the process, right? The process begins with you setting goals and expectations for each and every individual employee for the entire year. Because the only way that you're going to make sure that they're doing what you need them to do is to set goals and monitor those goals throughout the year before they get to the annual review. So how do we do it? Well, number one is we start with goals and that's gonna start with the business goals. And then you're gonna break those business goals down into the individual roles, the employees that you have working in your business, okay? Now that you have those, and of course, by the way, use a smart or a smarter framework for setting up those goals. They need to be specific, measurable, all of those different things uh, in those two different frameworks. If you're not familiar with the SMARTER framework, which is S-M-A-R-T-E-R, uh, that's by Michael Hyatt. If you search SMARTER and Michael Hyatt, you'll find it. Uh, that's my preferred method. And so once you have those individual expectations of those roles, now you need to break that down and you need to basically be monitoring your employees for those roles and coaching your employees for those roles. So it's one-on-ones, feedback, and coaching. Okay, so the one-on-ones are the weekly, bi-weekly, monthly meetings, however often you need to set them. I recommend weekly. Uh, feedback is when something goes wrong or something goes right, and you provide them either feedback to correct the situation or feedback to actually continue what they're doing that was positive. 
And then of course coaching. Coaching is when things go a little bit more wrong and you need to actually fix a problem. And so coaching comes in uh, to kind of make sure you get them back on the path. Uh, feedback is for more of a one-off problem. Coaching is if you see them diverging away from that goal you set them, it's to get them back on the tracks uh, so they can continue out the year and actually meet their goals. Now, if you're not familiar with one-on-ones feedback and coaching, uh, those are part of the management trinity set up by the, uh, the guys at Manager Tools. And I'll include the link to their website. They've got a lot of podcasts that explain it very, very well. Uh, so you can get all that information there. And just remember, your employees will only meet the expectations that you set and follow up on. So make sure you're doing it on a regular basis. So at the end of the year, when reviews come around, nobody is surprised. All right. Now, as promised, another person that you should know in this industry. And Actually, if you don't already know this person, I don't know, you know, what rock you've been living under, but um, Carl Palachuk uh, was instrumental in me and helping my, not only my managed services business, but even way back when I had a break fix business, right? So Carl's emails, he sent these emails out that would have these standard operating procedures, right? And he's got a YouTube channel with a lot of them on there now. So go ahead and check that out. But the man literally wrote the book on managed services and not just one, but you know, a, a few, right? I could go on, but these are just the ones that I have in physical form, right? I've got several more in audiobook form that I haven't purchased in physical form. So if you haven't checked him out, make sure you check him out. Um, Small Biz Thoughts is uh, where he gives a lot of this information away for free. Uh, sign up for his newsletter, read his books. I highly recommend uh, Carl. And he's got podcasts too. So he's got the Killing It podcast that he's part of. He's got uh, the Small Biz Thoughts uh, podcast that he does. So check the guy out. He's busy, of course, as you can tell. But uh, the information that he provides is, is just incredibly valuable to the industry. Thank you, Carl. All right. And I know this has been a terrible monologue with no B-roll in it. Um, and I'm sorry, you know, this is good. This is what's going to happen sometimes with Vlogmas is I'm just going to sit down and talk to the camera because that's what I had time for today. It's just the way it is. But thank you for enduring. Hopefully these three tips were helpful to you. And, you know, if you haven't checked out Carl, make sure you check out uh, his books. Lots of help there. Um, but remember, Vlogmas is continuing on. I still got more videos to do. So make sure you hit that like button or dislike button, you know, whichever floats your boat. Click subscribe so that you can see the new videos when they come out. And if you really, if you really want to see these videos when they come out, go ahead and click that bell to make sure that you're notified when the videos are actually posted. Thanks a lot. I really do appreciate you guys being here. Let's continue the conversation on the Facebook group. If you haven't seen the Facebook group, it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash all things MSP. Uh, it is a members only group. So you do have to answer a couple of questions before you uh, are allowed in. But uh, that's where we want to have these conversations about running the business side of your managed services business. See you in the next video.